All right, before we go to Tom Littleton and then Simone Gold, uh, breaking news here tonight, two big stories for us. That is MyPillow 2.0. You got any B-roll footage to show there, Logan? Uh, this is my first opportunity to announce what came out today. MyPillow 2.0. Yep. If you'd like to get it, you can order it. Apparently, thousands of these have already been ordered, and it just came available today. MyPillow 2.0. Some new technology that was not available when Mike developed the first MyPillow, and now we have MyPillow 2.0 that he was talking to me about tonight on his show is better than ever. It's great technology. There's Mike Lindell, and he's uh, getting ready for filming one of the commercials related to the new MyPillow 2.0. You can go and order that at MyPillow.com. Use that promo code, please, B66. You get savings, we get credit. If you appreciate all we're doing, would you please use our promo code, B66? You use another promo code, we don't get credit. But if you appreciate the Worldview Report, Brandon House Live, that uh, Logan and I spend hours every day l running Lindell TV as we launched it in April of 2020 with Mike Lindell, we work really hard, and we need your support to keep it all going. Would you please use the promo code B66? <coughs> use that promo code B66 for the new MyPillow 2.0. Would you do that? Thank you. Let me also tell you about something else we're doing. We've never done this before, and that is we are making February, which is just a couple days away, but we're giving you the, the, the head start. February is free freight. Free freight. Free Freight February. Say that five times fast. Free Freight February. We are not charging for shipping, handling, postage on our products right now. Some of you have said in this tough economic time, I want to get some of the freeze-dried food. But the cost is expensive. I get that. But the shipping puts it out of my range. Okay? How about if we just take away the shipping for you guys? All right? So here we go. Take a look at this. WVW, you better get a pen and a paper because you can also use the number. WVWTVstore.com. We've taken away the cost of the shipping for a limited time. That's the plan. Click on emergency food supplies, all emergency food supplies. You can get the Ready Hour Ultimate Breakfast Kit. You can get the Ready Hour Mega Protein with real meat, not synthetic meat, real meat. Ready Hour Fruit, Veggie, and Snack Mix. Ready Hour Gluten-Free Food Kit, one-year emergency food, four-week, two-year, six-month, three-month, the 72-hour test kit, however you want it, you can get it there, wvwtvstore.com. No shipping, free. We are going to eat the cost of the shipping. Let me tell you something, folks. In, in reality, in some of these orders, that's several hundred dollars. Several hundred dollars you're saving that we were charging you for because that's what we get charged for shipping. But now we are going to, for a time, offer you a free freight February. I'm not charging you for the freight, for the postage and the shipping, the handling. We have to pack it up the whole nine yards. We're paying for the boxes, the labels, the guys to pack it up. <laughs> I may regret doing this. Uh, go ahead, wvwtvstore.com. Now, if you would like to Place the order over the phone. It's her birthday, but she's even working tonight taking calls on her birthday. So you might wish her a happy birthday. You can call Libby at 901-468-9357. 901-468-9357. And she'll take your order over the phone right now. You can also text her. If her phone is busy, just text her or leave her a message. She'll get back to you as quick as she can. Uh, but again, free shipping so do not delay that's also on our emergency supplies go back to wvwtvstore.com click up at the top emergency supplies and when you click on emergency supplies right there it'll bring you to this page and we are distributors of a brand new pro water filter system no shipping the solo stove no shipping the solo stove pot set no shipping the Crank Ready Hour 4-in-1 Emergency Solar Flashlight AM FM Weather Radio with Hand Crank. No shipping. Now, folks, why would you not do this? If you, do, if you don't take advantage of this before I come to my senses, uh, you're, you're, you're missing out because I'll tell you something. There's clearly a crisis here. We heard about it. We heard about it. They're weakening our workforce. They're making our workforce sick. They're making great Americans sick. They are, uh, somebody's apparently burning down our food processing plants. 
We just had a massive eggplant look like burn up. You guys read about that? And now, of course, it's going viral about all the people that have their hens laying eggs in their backyard, and the feed has made them for the last six, seven months not produce any eggs. So they go to a different feed. <clears throat> they go to feed that they would normally give to goats. They start giving it to their hens, and guess what? The eggs come back. I mean, is this all coincidental? I don't think I believe in that many coincidences, do you? There's obviously an attack on the food supply. So here's your chance. By the way, tonight in the Mid-South, someone mentioned the word snow. And when they mentioned the word snow or sleet or ice, folks, people lose their ever-living minds. And they are lined up tonight from someone, I, two people I know that were there, from the grocery checkout aisle all the way to the back of the wall at a major supermarket. From, the cl from where the clerk checks out your groceries <clears throat> all the way to the back wall of the store, every lane, multiple lanes, were lined up to the back of the wall because they heard the word sleet, snow, ice. They heard half an inch, quarter of an inch ice, which means power out. Well, that's happened here in the Mid-South, some folks, for three weeks last year three weeks. So it does happen. And so they're freaking out. I'm not freaking out because I have a two-year supply of emergency freeze-dried food. I have water filtration systems. I'm good to go. How about you? If this is what people do, listen to me now. If this is what people do with the threat, it hasn't happened yet and it may not happen because sometimes we're told these things and they don't come to pass. But if this is what people are doing with the threat of a quarter of an inch or a half an inch of ice, and they're freaking out to this degree, or they don't have enough preparations on hand, because I'm not standing in that line. No one in my family's got to go up there and stand there, because we have two-year supply of food. We're good. But if everybody else is so depleted in their resources as far as their stockpile that they got to go stand in line, well, that tells me they don't obviously have enough food on hand. So if that's what's going to happen under the threat of a quarter inch, a half an inch of ice, what's going to happen when the, if and when the banking system collapses? When your bank is locked up, locked out? When they've done a bail-in, negative interest rates? Or when hmm, there is a major terrorist attack and they bring down our power grid? Well, good luck getting in line to buy food at your local grocery store when there's no power. You think they're going to let you in? Or you think they're going to lock the doors and be worried about looting? How are they going to check you out? You got cash? Some do, some don't. A lot don't anymore. So how are you going to pay for said groceries? You can't go to the bank, can't go to the ATM. Good luck. I don't understand why people don't under, come to the reality that we are being led by a nation of people that are evil. You just heard it. They're murdering millions and millions and millions of Americans. They knew this would cause the death and harm and maim millions and millions of Americans, and they did it anyway. You think this same government is going to come to your rescue? When they have a cyber attack or a country is attacked in another way, which largely would probably be invited or permitted or orchestrated by people in our own government for their own, well, agenda. So this is your chance. Free Freight February. WVWTVstore.com or you can use the phone number 901-468-9357. All right, joining me now is Tom Littleton of 30piecesofsilver.org. Before we go to Simone Gold, who would like to knock down a lot of reports she's hearing. She's come to us tonight to address them head on. Dr. Simone Gold, founder of America's Frontline Doctors, in just a minute. First, a report by Tom Littleton. We asked Tom to come on to make reports to us about the religious Trojan horse. That's one of my books I wrote. We started calling his updates Religious Trojan Horse. Tom, welcome to the broadcast. Thank you for joining us. Uh, good to be with you, Brandon. And, and I hate to hear that people don't even get their birthday night off around there. You're no. really working through. We, we cracked the whip. We cracked the whip here. No, they, they, she chose to work on her birthday. So, yeah, everybody say yeah. happy birthday if you call into Libby to place an order. Well, it's all in the family. So that's, that's right. Good. That's right. <laughs> she's, got a, she's, got a, she's got a nice boss. Uh, who happens to also be her father for those who someone yeah. said someone said someone said to her yesterday on the phone today on the phone do you do you know Brandon House she said yeah a little bit <laughs> she, she laughed and she said that's actually my father and uh, the guy on the phone was like you're kidding you're Brandon's daughter so uh, yeah so there you go um, 
Uh, let's go to your website, 30 Pieces of Silver. You got so much over there. World Economic Forum Beyond the Rainbow Push will continue to spill over into churches via compromised Christian leaders. Here we have the World Economic Forum. <clears throat> By the way, last night on my TV show, I showed video clips and printouts where the World Economic Forum is big on using religion, spirituality, and faith. And they're putting together a yeah. lot of panels. Ironically, I showed that last night, and here you are furthering that today with even different information. Tell our audience what you have tonight on our religious Trojan horse report by Tom Littleton. Well, uh, you and I have been reporting for a while about how this is already bleeding over and we're seeing uh, our seminaries. Uh, we're seeing a lot of uh, religious leaders, missions organizations, the Southern Baptist Convention being overtaken by diversity, <clears throat> equity and inclusion, uh, justice and uh, you know the woke agenda. And so here we see, uh, as we followed for quite a while, the LGBT agenda being featured at the World Economic Forum. Uh, interestingly, there, uh, uh, there are no uh, evangelical leaders on this panel, but the main uh, spokesperson who does a lot of the talking is the head of GLAD, which is a big LGBT organization, and she's a professing Christian. So she takes her kids to uh, Sunday school. She uh, has a... Um, uh, uh, a wife, and they have two kids, and so uh, they're they're pushing the normalization of their Christian faith, and of course, all the globalists are a big uh, mix of universalist and uh, and uh, you know everybody melted together uh, in in the big uh, uh, dialogue, uh, interfaith, multi-faith dialogue. We cover a lot of that, but as you know, we have seen how specific to undermining human rights, the LGBT. QI agenda, as they call it, has been uh, has become, and here with the World Economic Forum, we have a a tremendous insight at the top level of activism within the uh, World Economic Forum. Two events that took place during Davos 2023. One was this panel called uh, "Beyond the Rainbow" uh, and advancing LGBTQI rights, and uh, we can see some uh, excerpts from that in a moment. I would suggest that everybody watch the entire thing if they have time uh, later. It's only about uh, 25 minutes of discussion and then a Q&A, but you, you'll see how this is being orchestrated from the top down. And the World Economic Forum is pushing this to say that it is economic justice. It is a viable uh, plan for economic growth. Uh, it is what's called inclusive economics. So they bring in these heads of various NGOs, non-government organizations, Human Rights Watch, uh, GLAAD, others, and they feature them on this panel. Then, of course, we move to uh, what they did on the main street of Davos, which is they set up this uh, lighting up the promenade, uh, and they featured the rainbow colors throughout the main street. And as all the CEOs and world leaders came, uh, if you're from Georgia, your governor was there, uh, you know, a lot of our representatives and, uh, and American leaders were there, and they got to walk down this promenade all lit up in rainbow colors with Google and Accenture and uh, Zoom and all these other companies and the little cafes and stuff that were there. So the big push of LGBT rights rolled out on two separate events, uh, and it happened right there at Davos 2023. Of course, they see the conservative church and conservative Americans as a big enemy, and we'll see that in some of the discussion, uh, what a big problem it is in conservative America. But uh, you can go ahead, and uh, if you want to go to those uh, to the video on that uh, main link, and then uh, draw up those, uh, those couple of clips we, uh, that I sent you. All right, let's do that. By the way, uh, while I look those up, Tom Wilson, tell our folks what, why you call it 30 pieces of silver. Well, you and I are aware that uh, a lot of guys have just sold the farm. They've sold their soul. They've sold out like Judas, who sold out Jesus for 30 pieces of silver, which, by the way, was the price of a slave in that day, uh, that these guys are selling out the Lord, they're selling out their church, they're selling us out, selling out our faith uh, to uh, these global agendas. You know, we, we watch these guys there like Rick Warren, Francis Collins, other leaders that are there, Billy Graham's granddaughter, they have frequented World Economic Forum, and they are part of this spiritual, universal, um, uh, global religion that is being formed out of uh, the United Nations and uh, UNESCO and World Economic Forum. So uh, these are guys who've sold out. 
And uh, for whatever their 30 pieces of silver, their Cayman accounts, uh, they were weighed in the balance and uh, found wanting. Absolutely. All right, let's go to the first clip. This is Beyond the Rainbow, Advancing the LGBTQI Rights. And let me just explain to people, we're not being bigots here, okay? What we're, we're not, we're not, in large respect, most, most people are like, look, we're not look, <clears throat> looking to be the morality police, okay? This isn't what this is about. This is about taking a group of people, making them cannon fodder for the revolution to say, who is it that is suppressing you, oppressing you? Oh, it's the Christians and the capitalists. What do you mean the Christians? Well, they preach against what we say. You mean they go to the Bible and read Romans 1, and then they get on the airwaves, terrestrial radio and TV and the internet, and they spew this hate, and they need to be prosecuted for hate crimes. What they're trying to do is use the LGBTQ plus I agenda to take away free speech and freedom of religion of Christians. So when was the last time you read about a real, true Christian mistreating anyone of the LGBTQI+. We would say no. In fact, uh, Tom here maybe won't tell you, but he spent years as an evangelist street preaching to many people of all shapes, colors, sizes, and backgrounds and life, you know, styles. So we wouldn't mistreat them, but they're trying to say we would, or we are, by preaching what the Bible says on these issues so they can use that as hate speech legislation to shut down the church. Isn't that what Karl Marx said? My object in life is to dethrone God and destroy capitalism. This is all a front. This is cannon fodder. Same the way they use the illegal immigrants or the poor or the migrants to say they're the ones oppressing. And then you set up your enemy by setting up false charges. And then you go and you deprive them of their freedom of speech, freedom of religion, and their livelihoods. So here's the first clip coming out of Davos, World Economic Forum. Critical, especially because as it gets polarized, that's a way to fight back, is to be public. Um, and I do think that corporates behind the scenes have been using that. In the United States, a lot of times, you know, when you were saying, like, we're seeing it's, I think we're 18 days into the new year, and we've seen over 100 anti-LGBTQ bills proposed already um, in the United States, 100. Last year, there was more than 300 anti-LGBTQ bills. Most of them are targeting trans youth, um, which is a tactic. Um, they have the smallest amount of share of voice, so we have to be speaking up and out for them. Um, and they're, so my point in that is that we've worked with a lot of corporates behind the scenes to call in those states to say, I'm not, I'm going to pull business. I'm not, I need safe places for my employees. And um, we've also seen employees in countries where it is illegal create, use their space almost as an embassy, if you will, as a safe space in there. And those are tougher for sure. And they, and they're nuanced. Um, and I've spoken with CEOs who have made the calls themselves to LGBTQ employees in those spaces and places to say, here's how we're going to do this. What do you need? Um, all right. So there, all this legislation, they say is anti-LGBTQI+, whatever. What, that, what I'm guessing that means is the transgender legislation is they're saying <clears throat> we're not going to allow transgenders into the bathrooms of the, of the say, instance, a boy that now thinks he's a girl, we're not going to let him come into our bathroom, the girls' bathrooms, and we're going to protect right. from this agenda. They see that as an attack, whereas the legislators and the parents and the, and the real clergy say, no, we're just simply trying to protect our children from this ideology. Right. And, and, from, and we have had cases where a guy dressed as a girl w reportedly went into the bathroom in Virginia and raped, another, raped a girl. Right. Yeah. Right. And also the legislation to prevent uh, the uh, hormone blockers and the uh, the early stages of transition therapy for uh, prepubescent children and all, all these this craziness that's going on in the name of uh, uh, transgender youth. Uh, they're saying, let's put a stop to this because it's harming children. And then, of course, the mutilation of their bodies with uh, surgeries and sterilizing them. Uh, so these guys are uh, are calling that hate, hate.
hate speech and targeting LGBT youth when in fact it is uh, this agenda that's confusing youth and the culture that's confusing youth. And the, so they're trying to make sure that no one can step in and prevent uh, these kind of uh, uh, operations to continue. And of course, the privacy issue in the bathrooms, uh, women's sports, uh, they see those as uh, hateful and anti-LGBT trying to protect women in sports. I don't know if you saw that going around on Twitter, the uh, the first uh, transgender figure skater from yeah, Finland. Th- that didn't turn out uh, so well, did it? It didn't. It was pathetic. I mean, at least they could have gotten a guy that could skate. Uh, You know, he couldn't even stay on his feet. But everybody's just supposed to act like this is normal. And that's what these World Economic Forum people are saying. And, hey, we need corporations to put the pressure, right? You got that. That was we're going to put economic pressure on you to get you to comply, to get you to back off of any of this kind of uh, anti-LGBT stuff. And so they're going to come in your state. I mean, I'm from Alabama. Tim Cook is from Alabama, from Auburn. And he's been very active at our legislature with his Apple fortune. Uh, to uh, push against these kind of legislations as they've come up. So we're seeing this in every state where conservatives have a um, have a say, have a voice, and have tried to put a stop to this. So, and, and of course, they're pushing as an economic issue, and they're using economic pressure in order to prevail, to get the corporate world behind them. Absolutely. Let's go to the next clip for the second time before we go, Dr. Simone Gold. Well, here we go. Here's some audio. Here we go. The entry point. Tirana, how do you convince people that this is a basic human right? Yeah, I mean, I think that actually it's the LGBT community as a whole who's actually led this fight, you know. But, you know, we've been. It, talking about what are the solutions and it's not just a legal fight it's not the the realization of these rights isn't going to just come from the creation of strong laws and challenges in the courts it also is about changing societal opinion it's about challenging discriminatory views it's about making sure that people are seen in the mainstream media in day-to-day life and I think that's another opportunity where we have of the corporate world to play a really important role. It's in the, as, as one of our colleagues said in another forum that we were in the other day, the hearts and minds part of this. And that is to make LGBT um, pe- people, the community visible when you are talking about your product, you know, visible in your imagery. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, we can make sure that your products are centered towards them. And Okay, so now it's about hearts and minds and pushing this agenda on you and forcing you to accept it, th- forcing it right down your throat so you can see two men right. kissing on the mouth as we see on disgusting Fox News over and over in one of their commercials I've seen on their yeah, channel. And this is- this is all about normalization. Of course, they say that they're, they, you know, that uh, conservatives are targeting uh, uh, LGBT youth, but in fact, they're targeting all youth to try and normalize this agenda. And I know you, you've got a, a lot going on, but if you can go to that next event that I sent you, uh, this was the uh, World Economic Forum the annual meeting. Uh, just as it got underway, the LGBTQ visibility. Uh, was made uh, front line here as the heads of state and the CEOs uh, descended, the civic leaders from around the world, they were greeted with the Partnership for Global LGBTIQ Equality as pride on the promenade. If you go there, you can see how the push that they made to bring all of these uh, companies in on the main street there in right Davos. Right there, is that it? Is that it? Uh, yeah, that's one of them. And and so this entire thing was lit up. Uh, there were uh, signs at night, uh, Google, um, Zoom, uh, Accenture. Uh, a lot of these were lit up that, at night to, um, I think you're on a different email than the one I, I originally sent you. But um, this uh, this has the uh, you know the all the the corporate uh, pride being shown uh, and the colors in in the event itself and so the the problem was this was a mainstream main street event and so everyone who attended knew that uh, they were rolling out the rainbow uh, uh, pride for uh, the 2023 Davos meeting. Here's one of them, right? Right, right here. Yeah, yeah, that's one of them. 
And uh, you, as you see, they they continue. This reminds you of the White House, right? You yep. remember when Obama yep. did that? And yep. of course, Biden has done that. So uh, this is showing the pride. And, uh, and 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 again, remember, this is World Economic Forum. Now, Accenture is the company that did this. Uh, they were the co-leaders of this event. And that is a big global uh, consulting firm. And the head of that is a woman named... Um, uh, um, I'll turn to it in a second. Uh, her name is uh, Julie Sweet. And Julie Sweet is actually a member of the, uh, she's the CEO of Accenture, one of the main sponsors of this Main Street uh, Pride event. And uh, she is a World Economic Forum member, board member, and she is the wife of our Senator Ted Cruz, uh, uh, chairman of his, both t his 2012 and his 2016 uh, campaigns for Senate and then for president. Wait so, a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Let's go to the screenshot. You're saying this lady right here, Julie Sweet, chair and CEO, there she is working in the forum. You're saying she is recognized as Fortune's most powerful woman in business by Forbes, one of the world's 100 most powerful women. She's been driving change and creating value as a CEO since 2010 and chair since 2021 of what company? <clears throat> Uh, this is of Accenture, the company that actually put together this this uh, Main Street uh, oh, yeah, pride. Oh, yeah, right here. Yeah, yeah, Accenture. So uh, she's their CEO. You scroll on down, you'll see where I got that. Keep scrolling, you'll see there. That's where I got that excerpt from. And she's one of the leaders. She's on the board. And her husband is Chad Sweet, and he is the uh, campaign uh, chairman for uh, for two election cycles for uh, Ted Cruz. Uh, I know for sure that she, uh, I provided the link that she is a donor to Ted Cruz campaigns. And so you have to wonder, uh, as, as a guy who had a lot of Christian uh, support and is seen as an America first kind of guy, uh, why he's got someone chairing his campaigns uh, who uh, is married into uh, directly into the World Economic Forum and uh, and actually heading one of the biggest uh, um, consulting firms driving this woke, uh, uh, politically correct uh, economic policy. Yeah, indeed. And well, you know, I was warning about him in my book, 2015, The Coming Religious Reich, and his uh, push of the Trans-Pacific Partnership, which would help create like a European Union type thing. I warned about his wife, Heidi, and what she was doing with the Bush administration and more. So I've never trusted Ted Cruz at all. Others did so, and now they're finding out we were right. Uh, 30 pieces of silver.org. 30 pieces of silver.org. As always, thank you for your report tonight, Tom Littleton. Thanks. Good to be with you, Brandon. You too, Tom Littleton. Check out his website, 30 pieces of silver.org.